so I am recording. And uh, so in this overview that we made, we now know what is a, an electromagnetic wave. We know the simplest case, a plane wave. We know what does it happen when light is propagating in a medium. We know what is phase shift. What is the optical path? We recalled all these concepts. And uh, now we go ahead a bit and uh, we ask ourselves, okay, wha what does it happen if instead of having a, a flat interface between two materials, we considered an infinite interface between two materials? I have got an interface that it is not flat between two materials. Okay, then the things get complicated. Okay, we will not do this, even if this is really very interesting in optics, because if you know how to master difficult things, then you have a value and you, and this is the why Zeiss, Olympus, Nikon and Canon earn money because they master optics at a very difficult level. Okay, if it will happen to you to work in the field of optics, you will have to say what has happened in the general case. And what is the general case? A wave with a, we can't use this, a wave with a generic wave front that is getting to a generic interface between two material and is being distorted to generate a generic wave. Of course, this is a very difficult problem. But nowadays, there is no very difficult problem because fortunately, there are MATLAB, COMSOL, and whatever, and you use numeric solutions for that, okay? But we want to give just some principles that then might be useful in the next description. And we remain in the field of geometrical optics. And we ask ourselves, what is the simplest surface that is separating two media after the case of the flat interface, what is the most simple surface that has a degree of difficulty a bit larger than the flat interface? What comes to your mind? What is the simplest? A curved, but which curvature? A spherical curvature, okay? That is the why in optics, the first optical system that you study is the so-called diopter. And what is a diopter? Think that you have a direction of propagation and think that you have a spherical interface which has got a certain radius of curvature like this, that is separating two media with a different refractive index. This is the simplest case you can think of, okay? Now, there are some rules, some conventions that are used in optics that are the following. Say that you have a light source like this, then to identify the position of this light source, first of all, you call this the optical axis. 
So the axis that is containing the source and that is perpendicular to the interface and in passing through the center, you call this opt optical axis. Then you say, you call this point here, the vertex of the diopter. So the point where the diopter crosses the axis. And you say to identify the position of this source with respect to the diopter, you use a coordinate Q and you by convention, this is a convention, You assume that Q is larger than zero if S is at the left of B. So if S is on this side, Q is larger than zero. And in this sketch, Q is larger than zero. If for any reason, this point like source is here, then Q would be negative, okay? Then we know that, and I, we don't lose much time on this. We know that light, if a light beam is emitted by this light source in a certain direction, this will be sent in a point that is named the image, the image. And the, the position of this image is identified by a coordinate P. And this coordinate P is positive if the image is on the right hand side of B. So P is larger than zero if I is on the right of V. Okay? These are the conventions. Then what about the radius of curvature of the surface in optics? R is larger than zero, like in this sketch that I marked here, if the center of curvature is on the right hand side of B. If C is on the right of B. Okay, these are the conventions in optics. This angle here you can call alpha. This angle here you can call beta, beta. This angle here you can call gamma, okay? Now, if the angle alpha is large, okay? then it is not true that uh, uh, all optical rays that can be emitted by the source are sent to the same spot here the same image point it is not true so in general a diopter is a so-called astigmatic system a stigmatic not stigmatic system okay but if alpha and as a consequence beta and gamma are small and what does it mean small in physics it means that you can approximate the tangent of alpha with the sinus of alpha with the angle itself or provided that you measure alpha in radians okay then if you can make this approximation Therefore, if you are in the so-called paraxial approximation, in paraxial approximation, or Gauss, and you see Gauss always comes out. Gauss is always there. No? If you are in this paraxial approximation, so what does it mean paraxial, para in, uh, from Greek and Latin means parallel. So the, the light beams coming from the source are almost parallel. So this light beam is angularly narrow, then the system is stigmatic.
What does it mean stigmatic? That all the light rays that are coming from here are sent exactly to the same point here. So you have a B injective relation between a source and image. And you can also reverse it. If you put a source here, the image will be here. Okay. Now, under these conditions, if you make this assumption, then you can write an equation that is relating. Let me draw it again. That is relating the coordinates, and this equation is the so called equation of the diopter. And it is, remember, this, these are n1 and n2. It is n1 divided by q plus n2 divided by p must be equal to n2 minus n1 divided by r, the radius of curvature. So this is the diopter law that we have to study because it may happen to use it in a test, okay? So the ratio between the refractive index of the first medium and the coordinate of the source plus the refractive index of the second medium divided by the coordinate of the image must be the difference of the two refractive indices divided by the radius of curvature, okay? you get this, okay? Now, you can define two very important points for a diopter, and these points are named the foci of the diopter. So what does it happen? You have, if you have light, so the think you take the source of light and you bring to infinity, okay? Think that uh, this is an elastic, you bring it to infinity, okay? So what does it happen if you bring this to infinity? It means that light will be emitted to infinity, here you have a, a, a spherical wave, don't you? But if you bring the source to infinity, when the wave will reach the diopter, which will it be the wave front? A plane wave, okay? You get a plane wave, and then you ask your, yourself, if you have then a plane wave that is coming from infinity, where is this plane wave sent? What is the image? And the image is the so-called focus number one. And how do you find the coordinate F1 of this focus number one? Uh, you simply take this equation and you put here infinity. So if you put here infinity, this is zero. And so you get that N2 divided by the, the coordinate of your focus must be N2 minus N1 divided by R. So it means that the coordinate of the focus is N2 divided by N2 minus N1 times the radius of curvature. So light will be sent in the focus. Why do you call it focus? We know since we're, we were kids, because if you take sun and you use a lens, the light rays will be sent in a point where if you put a piece of paper, you burn the paper. That is the focus. Okay, this is the... Now, since in optics, you always have the inverse of distances. You see here, you have the inverse of distances. 
In the Middle Ages, when you had the so-called lens makers, people making lenses, they didn't have a pocket calculator. They didn't even know the rules to make calculations. It was very noisy for them to handle this equation here because then the natural units to measure in optics, they are not the meters. It is not convenient to work in meters, okay? But it is convenient to work the inverse, okay? So basically you never use this formula here, but normally you say one over F1 is N2 minus N1 divided by N2 times one over R. And instead of giving F1, you give this number and these numbers is measured in dioptries. The same units are being using, used by the opticians now when you buy eyeglasses, okay? So what, are, what is the unit dioptry? Is the inverse of meters, okay? Then when you buy a lens, they will tell you how, may, how, many, how much dioptries is this lens? They will give you the inverse of the focal length, okay? This is the focus number one. Of course, you can ask yourself the, the second question, where should I put this light source to get a light beam that is focused at infinity? Okay, so the second question you ask yourself is, okay, Where should I put light source to get that the beams that are coming out become flat? That means that they mean they meet at infinity. Okay? This distance here you call F1, F1. This point here you call focus number two. Okay. And of course, how do you get the focus number two? You simply put this to zero and this to F2 and you get the complementary relation. So the focus number two is uh, N1 divided N2 minus N1 times R, the radius of curvature, okay? So these are the two Fauci uh, of a diopter, okay? Now, now, what does it mean? That you here you have a spherical wave and the diopter is converting it in a plane wave. Okay. In the previous uh, case, you had a plane wave and the diopter was converting it in a spherical wave that then collapses into the image. Okay. This is the optics point of view, but how is it explaining, explained this phenomenon in terms of waves, if you think of it? How can you explain this? For example, if you have a plane wave that is arriving along this direction, based on what we said during previous hours. What is happening when this plane wave gets here? Look, what does it happen? It travels in the medium with the refractive index N1. That means that it travels with a speed that is C divided by N1. This is its speed, okay? Then at a certain point, this wave arrives here, okay? Now, you, the central part here accesses a second medium. Now, say that N2 is larger than N1. Then the speed of propagation V2 is lower than V1. 
Okay. Then this part of the wavefront accesses this region and slows down. Okay. These parts here continuous traveling at B1. So this is low down, this is running fastly. So at a certain point when the wavefront is here, for example, the central part traveled slower and the wavefront is bent. Of course, this is true here, but it is true here, this is true here and so on. So when this wave, flat wavefront gets inside here, at the end, you have a distorted wavefront. Now, if you are not in the paraxial approximation, this wavefront may have a, a certain shape. But if you restrict to the central region where the paraxial approximation is valid, then this wavefront here is spherical. And after that, it will collapse to the image. That is a point. Okay. I know I call this the Napoleon effect, but not because of Napoleon. We call, we call it uh, Hannibal also. Hannibal. No? When you had ancient battles between armies, how did you organize your, uh, your army? Soldiers on feet in the centers and horse riders on the wings. Because when you get to the enemy army, the front is bent and you close the army in a, in a circle and you can win. This is from Hannibal, Battaglia di Canne, Canne Battle. And on his desk, Napoleon had the book of the description of the Canne Battle, because that was a template until when the wars were done with men, not with drones, okay? So this is what is happening from the electromagnetic point of view. This is a perturbation of the refractive index. It is not as difficult, complicated as the perturbation we, had, we told before, the one with the stairs, no? But it is a perturbation that modifies the wavefront. And the same is here, okay? Why, what is happening here? It is happening the reverse. This is lower down, these are accelerated and the, the wavefront bends to a flat one. Now, this is concerning the diopter. So what we have to keep in mind is that we have this law, N1 divided by Q plus N2 divided by P must be equal to this. This is our Bible or Korean or whatever. Okay, this is our law. Be careful. Be careful because if R is here, this is positive. Okay, but if R is here, this is negative. So it changes the sign here. Be careful. If N2 is larger than N1, so for example, this is air and this is glass, then N2 minus N1 is larger than zero. But if you have that N2 is less than N1. Professor, the video has stopped again. Oh, whoa, just a while. 
we solved because we understood very quickly to reset the camera just a while. Wait, wait. then you should see a nice wall just a while here we are yes. okay okay it's okay and be careful because in that case, n2 minus n1 is less than zero. Okay, so for example, that means that if you have a diopter like this, where n2 is larger than n1, and the radius of curvature is larger than zero, then this factor here, n2 minus n1 divided by r is larger than zero okay so that means that the focus number one is here and the focus number two is here okay because remember the expression of the two foci the expressions of the two foci they were for example f1 it was uh, uh, please help me and two divided and two minus and one times r and this is larger than zero is here okay but be careful if for example n2 is less than n1 then this ratio is less than zero this f1 is here and the focus number one is here and the focus number two is here. They are reversed. Uh, this is difficult to understand. Okay. What is this situation? For example, this is the situation of light in water in the sea that is accent accessing an air bubble. You're getting inside an air bubble, for example. Okay. Non posso tra un quarto d'ora. No, sto a lezione. Ciao, ciao. Ok? Like this. And... Uh, re, you can, we can use... A simple way to find... Uh, the position of the image that is the following think for example that you have a diopter and this is the focus number two this is the focus number one okay then think that you have uh, an object here uh, I mark the object uh, as a, an arrow here. It could be something like this, no? But I simply sketch it like this. What does it mean? It is a, an object. Every point of this object can emit light, okay? Because light from this lamp will uh, hit here the screen and this light will be diffused. This is light source, light source, light source. I can say like this. And I, I sketch it like this. And I think, and I say, okay, where is it the image of this object? Then I will do this. I say, okay, 
light that is coming from infinity as a parallel beam that is passing through the point of this arrow continues. And where is it sent? It is coming from infinity. It is sent to the focus number one. We'll, get, we'll go here. Okay. Light that is getting to this point along a direction that is exactly pointed at F2, say like this, will continue. I, I have to bend. Let me. We'll continue like this. It is coming from the focus. Where is it sent? It is sent here. Okay. So light coming from this point, if I am in the paraxial approximation, gets here. This is we we just use the two rays. Okay. But I know that every ray that is coming from here, in particular, also the ray coming from here, is getting here. And remember that here you have a flat interface between two media with different refractive index. So you have a refraction with a Snell law here. I, the, the design here is not uh, how it should be, but these two angles are not the same. This is I and this is T. Okay, but nevertheless, they get here. This distance here is P. This distance here is Q. Okay, and if I do the same for every point on this object, I will get the same here. So the image of this extended object is an extended object with a different uh, dimension that depends on the position. Okay. So what I get is exactly this. And this is, for example, the case where N2 is larger than N1 and R, R is positive. Now, what N2 larger than N1? Now, what does it happen if you have this? And two less than an, and one. What does it happen? Where is the focus uh, number uh, one? It's here. Where is the focus number two? It is here. And think you have an object here. Okay. And now this is a bit difficult, but we can do it. A ray coming from infinity. Where is it sent by the diopter? What does it say to you, the law? Where it should go? To F1. No? Uh, but F1 is here. Come on. Reflection is very weak. We are neglecting reflection. No, we are only speaking about what does it happen? It happens what? I write it now. Look, you mark this beam, and it means that light coming from here is sent far from the axis as if it comes from here. This is the way you have to think. Okay. Then you write it here. You, you can. If I put a light source here, okay? So if I have a, a if I have a light beam that is coming here, uh, uh, no, sorry. If I have a light beam that is going to the 
focus number two. You remember the, the example before we, we take, we took light going to the focus number two that was here. So if it goes here, what is this going to become? It goes to become light beam that goes to infinity because the two foci are inverted. And uh, since I am a monkey, Where do I think the light is coming from? Since I am a monkey, I look, I see this ray and I see this ray and I say, okay, they come from the back here. And so the image is here. I think it comes from there. So if I am in a hair bubble and I am, here, an object here, I see the object that is closer to me and it is smaller. This distance here, Q is larger than zero, but the coordinate of the image P is less than zero. Okay? And they match to the formula that we gave before. Now, in the previous case, the, the case we treated before, the image is real. What does it mean that the image is real? If I have a, a, an object, light coming from here was sent to a point. So effectively, the beams meet again there. So I can put a piece of paper and burn it. Here, the image is so-called a virtual image because it is as if the light beams come to here, but they never cross here because he is doing this, she is doing that, and they do not meet. Okay, so there is no focus, no real uh, meeting of the beams, and the image is virtual. So be careful when you use the diopter law, because depending on the radius of curvature and depending on the refractive indices of the media, the foci can be reversed. And then when you use that, it can be, it can give you a completely different behavior. Okay. Now we stop here. And next time we shall discuss the slightly more complicated optical system that is the optical lens. And uh, once that we have done the optical lens, we are ready for the laboratory. So I would say that next week on Thursday, we go to the laboratory and we perform experiments on all this part of the program. Okay, are there questions? I will send you a specific, or I will put on classroom the instructions that you cannot uh, make mistakes, okay?